good. All right, we are going to get started. There are going to be literally thousands of people that watch this, and I am super excited about that. I've actually uh, been losing sleep in what you're going to you're going to see is sleep is one of my my big keys. I have really worked hard at putting this immune system master class together because understanding the immune system, understanding how it works, understanding what puts us at risk, it, 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 there's never been a more important time to get it. In Massachusetts, they're now mandating the flu vaccine. Um, you know, and there are different things about the COVID vaccine that, that I have concerns about. So I really wanted to get this right. I wanted to be able to get, the, I wanted to be able to get what's into my head. The reason why I am so passionate about what I do, and, and I want you to, I want to get what I know to have you know it. And it's going to seem, let's say, a little simplistic and I've done it like that. I've broken a very complex thing that happens into a simplistic nature. And really you're going to start to understand and you're gonna to start to see, does it really work that way? And when we dive into this and we really go into how the immune system works and how we get sick and what are the variables and, and the simplistic explanation that we've come up with and you start to play with it and understand it, that is when it's truly going to mean something for you. Now, we are live on Facebook. We are also doing this. This will be recorded. You will have a chance to send this out to your friends if you connect to this information. Um, or if you all have two computers going at one time, you know, send the, uh, the live uh, stream out. I just decided to do that last minute. And uh, we are going to dive into this masterclass. I'm super excited. Should be able to cover everything in about 45 to 50 minutes and then leave some time at the end for questions. So before we get started, I really think it's important for you to understand who I am and understand where I came from and why the immune system has been such a a uh, it, it's been such a great it, it's been such a focus for me for so many years and why i love it and why i really dove in to understanding how it works it all starts when i was a child i can always remember thinking as i was a young infant because i was a sick kid i had a lot of strep throat i had a lot of sinus infections I was told I was a carrier for strep throat and, and I was on antibiotics a lot, but I was, I, I would always remember being sick. And I always remember saying, man, you know, I wish I was a medical doctor because man, medical doctors probably never get sick. They have the information to be able to keep you healthy. And I, I always thought there was a medicine out there as a child thinking, oh man, if I was a, if, 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 if I was a medical doctor's kids, I would just, I would, um, I'd be able to have the medication and I would never be able to get sick. And that was my thinking. I can remember that at a young age. And then as a, a, a child that always got strep throat year in and year out, I can always remember it. It always started with needles in the back of my throat. I, the, the doc would look in, they'd see pus in the back of my throat. Then it would get the bubble gum candy, which was the antibiotics and it would go away and then it would get sick after that with a cold. And then I got to UMass Amherst and this is where I started thinking. And I got sick, I had pus all the way down the back of my throat and uh, I looked in, it was, I remember it was five o'clock in the afternoon thinking I just need to take a little bit of a rest, I need to go to the infirmary and I have to get antibiotics to get rid of this infection in the back of my throat. So what did I do? I fell asleep at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. I didn't wake up until eight o'clock the next morning. And I can remember thinking, oh no, uh, I, I, gotta, I, I, I never went. And, and I always feared that if I let the strep throat go for a long period of time, that would be devastating to me. I would just get sicker and sicker and sicker. 
And something crazy happened that made me think. I woke up and I remember scratching the back of my throat and I'm like, what? My sore throat's gone. I had a high fever that night and my sore throat was gone the next morning. I looked in to the mirror, I shined, you know, I, I shined the, the flashlight down my throat and gone, completely gone. So I remember thinking, holy mackerel, my, I, I, I had strep throat when I went to bed and I slept it off. So that started me thinking how important sleep was and, and how, how and why did I get sick and how did I get over it? And it started to change my whole concept about being sick. So I started thinking about that when I was in college. And then, and then you know, fast forward, you know, after college over four years later, and then I graduated chiropractic school. And I still had, whenever I, I, I would take my immunology classes and courses, it always came easy to me because I'd read the book twice. I loved it. And I started to understand that there are two very, very different sciences out there. And people typically come at me and they're like, oh, yeah, where's the science? Um, you know, oh, uh, what you're saying is, is anti-science. I don't know what anti-science is, but there, in, in, in order for us to really dive in to understanding the immune system, we have to understand that there are two different sciences. And the problem with these two different sciences and the reason why there's so much divide in our culture right now is because innately one of the sciences makes sense to you and the other one does not. So I'm going to clarify the two sciences that are out there. And, and I know it's going to get a little bit confusing, but just bear with me. There's one science that's based on N Newtonian physics. It's a mechanistic science. So what a mechanistic science it means is that if you're going to identify the perfect circle, that per, the, the circles is going to identify that the perfect circle is going to be a circle that the rate at every point is equal distant from the radius. That's a mechanistic approach to science. Then the other science, which is vitalism or vitalistic science, is based on a quantum theory. That quantum theory changes. That quantum theory says, well, listen. That perfect, that circle that is equal distant, every point's equal distant from the radius, might define a perfect circle, but if the goal is to have a car drive straight and there are three tires that all wore in on the tire, on the car, if you put a perfect circle on there, it's going to be out of balance as it relates to if the car drives straight. So there's a lot more variability and complexity to that science. So then what ended up happening way back in the day, there was this whole thing that was called we got to find the the the, the we got to find the uh, the genes for cancer so the genetic experiment right they tried to find the gene for cancer to get rid of cancer but what came out of that is a different concept so you have genetics which is mechanistic saying you are your genes and then you have then you have epigenetics and they said well you can't you can't identify the gene for cancer because the, there's this code, this protein code on the, the genes and the genes don't take generations to change. The genes change real time. The genes can change based on your lifestyle. So this whole lifestyle quantum vitalism, vitalistic model started to develop. And that is what this information is going to be. I am going to come at you with vitalistic principles to explain a, the, 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 how immunity works and, and why when you, it, when you, when you listen to um, the, the differences that when, when somebody comes to me and they ask me if I'm afraid of COVID or if I'm afraid of a germ, I'm not afraid of a germ because there are variables that I know about in my own body that I can control, that means that the, 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 the disease or the, the, the virus is not bigger than my immune system. We have lived with viruses for cent for, 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 since the beginning of time. Our, our DNA is 80% virus. So it's so important to understand that it's a part of our, 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 our surroundings. 
and we need to have more vitalistic principles, more quantum principles, and I am going to teach you a simplistic way to understand how the immune system works. And I'm super, super excited about it. I'm going to actually bring up, if you have any questions and you want to ask a question, you can, you can type them as we're going. I won't answer them to the end, but uh, if you have any questions and you, and you don't want to, um, you know, remember them, either write them down or just type them in and we'll go through a few questions at the end. I don't know if I'll have time to answer them all, but we'll try to answer as many as possible. So I was sleeping the other night. And I'm thinking, how am I going to explain the immune system in a vitalistic way so people can understand it? And I came up with this analogy. It's a simplistic analogy, but it is exactly the reason why we get sick in the fall and winter and, and the, the, the length of colds that you get are far worse in the fall and winter than they are coming out of the winter, spring, and then in the summer because they're a variable. So let me explain and stay with me on this. Your immune system or your body works like a hybrid car, okay? So I have this little model here. So your, your immune system works like a hybrid car. So let's look at this. When you step on the gas, right? Or it's actually, if it's a hybrid, if you hit the electric, when you step on the foot pedal to make the thing go like a golf cart, so as you step on the, golf, on, on the pedal, you are getting performance out of the car. The goal is the car is moving forward. The more you step on the gas pedal, the more energy that that car is taking out and the more you're draining the battery of energy. So this is life. If our life is such where we're constantly stepping on the gas, we are going to run the car out of energy and the car eventually will you know, die. Will, you'll be broken down on the highway. Well, so if you're going to require movement out of that car and you're going to, the faster that that car goes, the more energy is taking to move it, the more you have to plug it in, the more you have to recharge it. And that's over here. Or when you take your foot off of the gas, I don't know if you've ever been in one of these hybrids, but as you, as you take the foot off the gas, as the car is slowing down, it recharges the energy. Your body is the same way. The more you're awake, the more you want performance out of your body, the more energy it takes to keep you going, you're exercising, you're, 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 you're stressed, your body is like, you think you're running from a tiger, uh, because you're so stressed, you, it doesn't matter if you're running or you think you're running from a tiger, your physiology still is in the same state. You think you're going to die from COVID. So we're all stressed. And, and, and are the kids going back to school? They're not going back to school. So there's all this stuff in our environment or, or these things that cause us to be burning our candle, to be running our car. Um, at, you know, at 80% or 90% or 100% of the battery because we get, we're expecting a lot of performance. So you say, well, doc, yeah, I understand. Use a car, then you're going to have to plug in that car. Same as the iPhone. The more apps you have on your iPhone, the more you have to plug it in. So what does that mean to me? How is that analogous to my immune system? Well, your body is the same way. Your body has two systems. Your go systems are considered your survive systems. Those are the systems that when you have to run from a tiger, you're in a state of survival, your body is going to engage. And, and, and then you have the plug-in systems, the systems that are your thrive systems. So you have survive, and then you have thrive. Why is this important? It's important because your thrive systems there are three thrive systems that are all connected. Three. How many? Three. Those are the ones that I want you to be thinking about. They are immune system, reproductive system, and digestive system. So your immune system, your reproductive system, and your digestive system 
all get sacrificed when you're running from a tiger, when you're in stress. So most of my chronic issues we've been, we see in this office over the last 20 years are because people are running too hard. They're running their cars too hard. They're running them to the max, right? And you're draining your battery. And when you go to recharge, you're not recharging back to 100%. You're recharging the battery back to 50. And then you're hammering the gas again, back to 50 hammering the gas again. And we're not giving our batteries enough time to recharge all the way. Then what does the, what's different about the winter in the fall than it is the summer? Because you, you say, oh, I'm living the same way. Well, you're not. Because the winter is now like having a trailer on the back of your car. It's extra stress. So it, there's certain things in the winter time that are now are, are depleting the energy, the amount of energy it takes for your body or that car to go. You might be going the same speed, but it's taking a lot more out of your battery. And, and when you start to deplete the battery, your immune system, your digestive system, and your reproductive system all get suppressed. So the question should be, not so much about you know the, the virus, which I think it's important. We need to protect ourselves. That's not what I'm saying. What I think the important aspect is, is what is it about winter that causes our body to be stressed? And then what can we do to fully recharge our banks, to fully recharge our, our um, immune system? Because then if you start asking those questions, now we start to get a more empowered way to live. And then we start to see that we are, more, we are more a product of our daily rituals than anything else. Our health and well-being is a product of our daily rituals. And it's because our daily, and our daily rituals are driven by our beliefs. So today, right now, we're going to change our beliefs just a little bit because what I want to do is I want to tell you what it is about the winter trailer that's like that, or the fall trailer that you're just lugging around and, and how can we lighten the trailer? How can we take the bricks out of the trailer? Or how can we recharge our battery so that we don't, we don't get sick? Because these systems going into the fall and summer are all gonna be suppressed and depleted. So let's go over the first variable. The first variable, and, and I'm going to have resources for you um at askdrmartoni.com um so we'll uh, we'll get there but i'm just going to say the first variable which a lot of people know is the sun right ultimately we get our energy from the sun we get our energy from the sun what does that mean well ultimately we get our energy from the sun so what's healthier for us a donut or spinach well, everybody knows that a spinach is healthier for you than donut. Why? Because especially spinach that's not cooked. The sun transfers its energy um, through the, the through the uh, through the leaf. It harnesses it with chlorophyll, grabs nutrients from the ground, harnesses. You get life energy, life energy from your food, right? And then when you when you look at some of the this curl on photography, you have energy. Energy has so there's energy in food. This right here is a conventional piece of corn. This is an organic piece of, piece of corn. It's called Curlon Photography. It shows energy. This is cabbage that's not cooked. That's cooked cabbage. So the more live the food is, the more that that sun has a chance, the, 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 the more natural the food that you're eating, the more energy you get from your food. So it is so important to eat green. Eat green, so green leafy vegetables, live foods, because we're getting our energy from the sun. So that also transfers to skin exposure. I know we want to be careful about, you know, getting cancer and and and, and um, you know and having sunscreen on, non toxic sunscreen. But we want to expose our skin to the sun. Everything gets sun. I mean, everything gets energy from the sun. So if there was no sun. 
That would be bad because we wouldn't have as much energy. That's why seasonal depression happens. We are tied into the circadian rhythm of the earth. That's why you know some animals hibernate as the sun goes away, as the more nutrient dense food goes away. There's a lot of things that happen. We are supposed to slow our lifestyles down in the um, in the winter time, and we do and, and we do not. We keep so as the sun sets as the, as the, the days get shorter and the nights get longer we are supposed to get more sleep i am a sleep guy how many people end up cutting it especially right around the time change you're going to notice a lot of people are going to get sick three weeks after the time change and that is because the time change is like putting an extra brick into your trailer because as at, as the time, as the time shifts an extra hour, we fall back. That puts a significant stress on our system. We need to be going to bed earlier as the sun is going to, as the sun is setting earlier. So instead of our 10 30, 11, hopefully 10 30, 11 uh, bedtimes, you know, you want more the uh, 10 o'clock, 9 30, 10 o'clock bedtimes if you can focus on that. That helps offset the stress. Of, 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 the, uh, of the time change. And that's gonna be a big one. And you wanna do that a week before the time changes. So you wanna make sure that you're going to bed earlier and earlier, maybe 10 minutes early, 15 minutes early, but right at that time change, you really don't want your body to get used to a full hour. So you should be going to bed at least a half an hour earlier, okay? Super important, if you don't wanna get sick because you'll see people around you, Inevitably, kids go back to school, people are gonna freak out if one person has the sniffles, but people get sick, not because of all the garbage that's going on in school, but because of the time change. That's a big, that's a big factor, one of the big factors. So sun energy, ultimately we get our energy from the sun, and then also live food. So we wanna harness that energy, we wanna go to bed earlier. I'm a sleep guy, sleep is huge. Staying on your sleep pattern, got a whole program on sleep. This is not the concept of this. But now let's talk about uh, live food. Live food, we want to get more live food, especially salads during the winter time and fall time, maintaining that. Nuts, get more raw energy, get that food. Make sure that it, you know, you're eating less cooked foods. But so as we go into the summertime, more oils and I mean, into the fall time, more oils and, and sustainable foods like uh, nuts legumes, those things are really good food sources to start to uh, start to eat, all right? So now a big one, and I think this is so overlooked. It is so overlooked and there's so much misconception about this one. And it's all about core temperature. You see, your body needs to maintain a temperature, temperature of 98 degrees, 98 degrees. That is a survival system that will drain. Remember, your body wants to survive before it wants to thrive. I'm gonna put two bricks in our wintertime trailer for this one because our body wants to survive before it wants to thrive. So in an 80 degree day, in a 70 degree day, it takes a significant amount less resources for your body to survive and bo their body to keep its temperature at 98 degrees than it does in a 30 degree day, than it does in a 40 degree day, than it does in a 10 degree day. So what happens is our body is wasting significant and enormous amounts of resources to be able to maintain a core temperature, especially in that zone when you're not really too sure, should I wear a, you know, a, a sweatshirt in the morning or, 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 or it's gonna get warm in the afternoon, so I'm wearing um, short sleeves. So, so our body gets into this, this, this crazy state of, of, of not knowing what to do. And, and, and while well, we get into this crazy state, not in the state of not knowing what to do, but in all intents and purposes, bundle up, maintain and be cognizant of a core body temperature, needing to waste enormous amounts of resources to keep your core warm. If your hands are cold, you're wasting resources keeping, it means your body's trying to get all that blood to keep the core warm. That is one of my significant and top, significant top five things that my, my, I tell my patients to be able to maintain a healthy immune system 
de decrease the amount of stress on the system, keep yourself warm and bundle up. Because a hack that we teach um, is to, if you want to stimulate your immune system, if it, so how does the body stimulate the immune system? It gives you a fever. Remember at the beginning, I talked about I got a fever and I fell asleep. And then that fever is what made it, that stimulated my immune system, slowed the reproductive rate of the bacteria down. My immune system kicked into overdrive and then got rid of my strep throat. And, and I've never had it since. So once my body got over it on its own, I haven't had it since. And I, never, I haven't had it yeah, since, uh, since college, since that time I got over it once. Why? Because the immune system jacks up at higher temperatures. So you don't want, you want to nurture that fever. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of this issue with the COVID is a dysfunctional immune system. And a dysfunctional immune system is, is, is caused by, you know, there's so many things that cause a dysfunctional immune system. Year after year after year, getting vaccinated with the flus. These are causing issues with the immune system. It's causing a hypersensitive immune system. So your body is not reacting normally to viruses. So what ends up happening is then you have a hypersensitive immune system. Body gets a fever. First thing we do, bang. Oh, I don't want to feel like that. So we take an aspirin to bring it down. And the reproductive rate of the virus just goes out of control and it chases it deeper. The more you chase your symptoms when you're sick, the sicker you are going to get. But this talk is not how to get, this talk is all about the variables. This is about the variables that a cause in the, that in the, in the, that in the winter time and in the fall time cause more load on your trailer, which causes significant amount more stress, which wears down your battery, which ends up making you sick. So we need to recharge that battery. We're not there yet. So sun, eating green, body core temperature. The body core temperature is a significant importance to be able to stay bundled up, especially in those, in those hybrid days. The hybrid days are the, are the most important ones because those are the ones you don't, the, when you're gonna get sick when it's raining and the kids are outside on the soccer fields and they're, if they play soccer and they're in short sleeves and they're shivering, that is suppressing their immune system. A few days like that, you'll notice in the next few days are all stuffy. Um, the next thing is, is hydration. It is so important to stay hydrated. I think Roger is on, on this call and uh, we were talking about, he has made a significant effort in, um, in, in drinking half of his body weight in ounces of fluid a day, 80% of that needs to be water. So for instance, if you're hundred pounds, you want to drink 50 ounces of fluid and then minus 10, uh, 50, so minus 10, so, nine, uh, so 40 ounces needs to be pure water. Hopefully I did the math right. So hydration. And, and people don't like to drink water in the, in the wintertime. They don't like to drink water in the wintertime because they're not thirsty, they say. But you get more dehydrated in the wintertime than you do the summertime because the air is drier and you're a walking humidifier. You are, wa you are losing fluid out, out of every, I was going to say office, but that's not right, <laughs> out of every area, your skin. You know, when you go, I go out to um, uh, Utah, Park City, Utah, and the air is so dry, your lips get so dry, everybody is giving you water. Same thing happens <clears throat> in the wintertime when the air is dry. You want to make sure that you stay hydrated. It's a significant stress to the system to lose hydration. And that is half of your body weight in ounces of H2O, and you take 80% of that, uh, of fluid, and 80% of that is water. Stay hydrated, okay? Now we're going to go number five. Number five is a good one because now we're going to start talking about immune system, reproductive system, and digestive system. If you want to stimulate, if, if, let's say you have a problem with your immune system. If you want to stimulate the immune system, you either stimulate it through the reproductive system or the digestive system. And then actually, yeah, I, I, I was going to talk about something else. But if you want to stimulate one of them, you can stimulate the other and you will stimulate because they're all connected through the parasympathetic nervous system. That's a big word, but
but they're controlled by the same nervous system. So if you shift, so if this is 100%, all right, let's use a different color here. If this is 100% go, right? Because your car is going on this side, the unplug is 100% rest, which is sleep. So the best way to recharge your battery is to do it at night sleeping. That is why, because we're carrying extra bricks in our winter trailer, it's why we need more sleep because we need more plug-in time. And if you don't get it, you get sick. And the master controller of all of this is the central nervous system, and we'll get into that. But for right now, if you want to improve your immune system, your reproductive system, because most people have an issue with all of them, but if you want to improve one, you pick one. Digestive system. How do you work on the digestive system? And we're going to kind of get into this. So the digestive system, the best way to work on it is to eat things like kimchi, to take a probiotic on a regular basis. And I will be going over my recommendations at the end. So, um, and so you can save those, those questions. I'm going to tell you how much probiotic and what I recommend and when I recommend to start taking probiotics because I'm not a big, you take supplement person just to take supplements. I like to do things specifically. I take supplements, boost my immune system for this period of time. I'll take a supplement to do this. If I need to focus, I'll do this. If I need to do something else, I'll do this. And I always change my supplementation like I change my diet based on what performance I'm trying to get out of my vehicle, right? Am I, am I trying to get sports performance? Am I, if I, am I towing my trailer? Am I trying to, I don't know, whatever it is, whatever that vehicle is. So you want to, you want to secure or, or protect your digestive tract. You want to protect your natural flora. There are different ways to do that. But one of the ways that I really like and that I really tap into is I take a probiotic on a regular basis. And you can either take one supplement wise, but I actually take, I take more during the winter time just because it's a stress on the system. There's not as much good live food out there. I, I eat kimchi, I do kombucha, and I take those things on a regular basis, on a daily basis to support my digestive tract. Because I know by supporting my digestive tract, I am doing what? I'm boosting my immune system and I'm also boosting my reproductive system and vice versa. You can, if, 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 listen guys, girls, whatever. Um, if you want to boost your reproductive system, you know, uh, you know, have sex with a spouse or not a spouse, that is one way to stimulate your digestive system and to stimulate your immune system and make you tired, right? Because anything, anything, um, oh boy, it made myself awkward. So anything that pushes you this way. Um, so if you eat food, a lot of times we get that slump, we get tired because our body shuts down in order to stimulate these. When you get sick or you have an immune system response, our body gets tired. When you're, when you, you know, after, you know, whatever, you know, you, uh, you tend to get a little tired. That's because you're stimulating all of these systems. So this is a quantum model. This is a vitalistic model. You're not either sick or healthy mechanistically. You're constantly on this continuum in this variable back and forth, back and forth in your lifestyle choice. Every lifestyle choice you make either moves you from being healthy or towards being healthy, right? So let's say we're on this continuum of health and wellness. You're either moving towards disease or away from it. And you want to make more choices to move away from disease. And that's what this is. Get sun. Get your skin exposed to the sun. Make sure that you're going to bed earlier. We're going to be talking about taking vitamin D and when you need to take that because that is a natural source of that. Well, that is one of the benefits of the sun is you get vitamin D that we lose during the winter time. Eat green. Harness that live sun energy in your body. Uh, core body temperature. Make sure you're maintaining a healthy, you know, bundle up. Make sure you're not really chilled. If, you, if you're not feeling well, jump in a shower. If you have a steam room, jump in a steam room. If you have a sauna, jump in your sauna. 
elevate that body core temperature. You can also do a direct exercise. Could anything that elevates your body core temperature is going to stimulate your immune system. You're artificially giving yourself a fever, which the body doesn't care what it is, but if your core temperature is elevating at 100 degrees, you are going to have a stimulated immune system. You're going to be more tired. All of these things are vitalistic. That is how you, that is how you start to hack your immune system by understanding this stuff. Digestive system, reproductive system, stimulate reproductive system. You can get, you can imagine there. Um, actually, maca is a good thing. M A C A, maca M A C A, good for endocrine regulating system. Helps the hormones um, in the digestive tract. Taking a probiotic. Now, number six, this is a big one. I said it earlier, fear, right? So living in fear, living in stress, your body's physiology doesn't care if you're running from a tiger, if you're actually running from a tiger or your body perceives that you're running from a tiger, you are still going to drain the car battery. You're going to drain the battery. Is, is, it's almost like, is your car moving forward or are the wheels on a dyno, right? Letting it spin, but the car's not moving forward. The car doesn't care. You're still using energy and you're still depleting the gas pedal. So living in fear, letting go of the fear that's around you and just living your life, unfortunately, is a way. I know that's a tough one. It's what I've done. I've disconnected, but I've been doing this for 20 years and I really understand the vitalistic principles of where the real risk comes from. But the fear, so what you can do is you can sit in meditation, you can start to work with these principles, start to ingest these principles, start to make these principles a part of you and a part of who you are. And then you'll start to see, holy macro, can it really be this simple? And guess what? It is this simple. And that is what I want thousands and thousands and millions of people to understand that our body is like a hybrid car, right? It's just in, in the winter is just putting a big ass trailer on the back of it. And then all of these stresses keep loading up our trailer. And the more stresses we can remove and the more we can recharge with sleep. That's why I'm such a sleep guy. Um, is be, then, then you're able to go through the winter and not get sick. The only time I get sick uh, is, is when I'm traveling, I'm staying up late and I'm having a difficult time sleeping because of you know, things that are going on. I'm, I'm out at parties right around the holidays and, and drinking alcohol, which is messing with my sleep patterns, but all of those variables. So now, try not to live in fear, meditation, downtime, reconnect, journal, Get your thoughts out. Really try to start getting control of the system. The more fear that you live in, you know, I should say, instead of living in fear, here, let's do this. I'm going to erase this, and this, this is going to be maybe my top one. Shut off your TV. <laughs> uh, TV, because that is all fear that lives on that baby. All right, now, number seven. Number seven is, is very misunderstood. And it's misunderstood because we, the people, we don't understand, not, not you, but in our culture, we don't understand vitalism. We don't understand that the body has an inner ability to heal. And we need to, instead of looking at, you know, the mechanistic saying the virus is infecting us, say, well, why am I a weakened host? Why is my immunity suppressed? Why is my immunity run down? And, and there's no better way, as far as I am concerned, and I've seen this time in, time out. My daughter was swinging on a swing, swinging on a swing. Healthy kids, they've never, never had medication in their life, right? Swinging on a swing. She swung off of a swing at seven years old, landed on her butt. We had a, I had a party, had a bunch of people. And I can remember, I need to adjust her. I didn't adjust her. Three days later, she ended up with a double ear infection. I'm like, oh, I knew I should have adjusted her. You would say, you would say, oh, that was just that just happened. It wasn't coincidence. When if you fall down the stairs or somebody's in an auto accident, they're going to be sick three days later. Why? Why is that? It's because the master system of this entire system, and you can see it back there, is your nervous system, is your central nervous system. 
and your central nervous system controls everything. Your brain controls everything. Now, if you have a spine that is in perfect alignment, in good alignment, whether it's you or your child, you are going to have nerve, the nervous system is gonna work effectively. If your spine looks like this, does it just seem plausible that there's more pressure on this side than there is this side? So if I'm watering a garden and I step on the garden hose, that garden health, the health of that garden is going to be significantly affected by the pressure on the hose. Your nervous system, your body works the same way. The health and well-being of your body, and I've been really tied into this over the last 20 years, the health and well-being of your body, how healthy you can be, is restricted to the health of your spine because your spine protects your central nervous system, and your central nervous system is controlling everything. That is why it is so critically important to go to a chiropractor that has these vitalistic principles, these fundamental principles, and understands how the integrity and the health of your nervous system is affected by the structure of your spine. Not all chiropractors are like that. You have to ask them. And uh, if you happen to live in the Boston area, I, I am. Uh, at, we are Atlantis. You can look us up. I'm going to give you a resource where you can find us, and you can come into our office. We're doing a special. Um, and uh, it's all, it'll be on the website. You can come in, you can check us out. Now, the last thing I want to go over, and this is really what the, 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 like anybody that asks me and they say, hey, doc, tell me what to take. Tell me, tell me what to take um, to boost my immune system. Is there anything I can take to boost my immune system? And I go out of my mind a lot of times because I'm thinking of all this. I'm thinking, how are you sleeping? How much water are you drinking? Are you draining your battery? It, I mean, uh, 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 and they're getting adjusted, which is a good thing. I, I, are you maintaining healthy body core temperature? Um, you know, are you eating live foods? There are so many other variables that get people to, you know, not, that people don't think about. When you start to think about the immune system, you need to think about it in a concept. That's why I started this out by with the electric car analogy. But there are things that you can take that can boost your immune system. That is why I am doing this now because a lot of times these things run out. I'm gonna tell you what I take, and, um, but I take it only through the winter and then I stop. And in this winter, I'm starting things a little bit early. Usually I start things in November, but I'm going to start things in um, October this year, October 1st. So it'll be October, November, December, January, February, March. It'll be six months. It'll be through the fall and it'll be through the winter and we're done in March because the sun starts to come out, starts to go into April, your immunity starts kind of kicking back in. So these are the vital things. And it's only a few things that I take um, that I, I will go over with you. And if you're interested, you can go to the site that the resource that I give you and, um, and then you can check those things out. I put a highlight of all of them down there and um, you, you, can, you can check them out. So the first thing I take, which is, which is different than I used to. So my recommendations have changed over the last five years than what I was doing before that. So as I take a vitamin D, but I take it very different. I don't take one during the summertime. I mean, I don't take, yeah, during the summertime and the spring, I only take it fall and winter. I take 50,000 IUs of vitamin D one time per week. I take it every Monday. I don't take vitamin D every single day. I take it one time per week. Um, and then the next thing is I take a probiotic. But the way that I do pro pro probiotics is different. And this is gonna be in the winter kit that you have an option. So you don't have to write this down. You'll go to uh, askdoctormartoni.com, askdoctormartoni.com and it's all there for you. And I'm gonna put more resources in there too. So then I take a probiotic. But the way that I do probiotics, cause I don't take one during the whole summer. I don't take one during the spring. I just take it into the fall in the winter. More specifically, usually in the winter, but I'm starting in the fall just because of the craziness that's going on. I take it 225 billion jumpstart for two weeks. Because remember, you're going to, you're, you're, in order to boost your immune system, you want to boost 
your digestive system. So I do a super dose of probiotics for two weeks. Then I take a 20 billion once a day through the winter time. That's number two. Then I also take a Mitocore supplement. Mitocore is a, is a, it's, it's a multi, it's a multivitamin per se, but it's designed to give you cellular energy and to boost your immune system. We've been using Mitocore now for the last nine years, and it is one of my favorite supplements. I don't take it all summer. I don't take it all spring. I only take it through the, the, the end of the fall in the winter months, because when you start to supplement like this, you end up, the supplements become a lot more uh, powerful and potent because your body gets used to things. Like if you go to you know, you know, do the Flintstone vitamins and do that every day of your life where you go to Costco and you get that, that big bucket of vitamins and you're, ah, and you're dumping those things in. A lot of that stuff goes out your urine. So, but when you cycle with high quality supplementation, you actually get new nutrients into your body. It is such a better way to do it. So I do a probiotic, um, a first 220, then 20 billion. Then I do a, um, um, a uh, vitamin D. I do 50,000 IUs of vitamin D once a week. Then I do a, um, a mitocore. And then the last thing that I'm, I'm adding into this kit is going to be a virusid. And virusid is a little blister pack. It's a, it's a, it's a th uh, two and a half day, depending on how, 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 how we're instructed to use a two and a half, three day, um, it, like super immune boost. So it's like 15 times stronger than emergency. And the thing is, is, is this is designed to only take when you run down. So each month I give you a pack because inevitably you're either traveling or you're doing something, you don't get a good night's sleep and you, know, you start to get that scratch on your throat. And the way that a cold is going to happen is I call it the denial phase. The news stations call it the asymptomatic phase. It's the denial phase is you have a sore throat or you know, your scratchy throat and you're blaming it on allergies or you run down and you got a headache and you just don't feel right. That is when you take a virus in. And, it, and it's antiviral, antifungal, antibacterial. We sell thousands of them, little packs. And they're super good to have in your purse, to have a, a, in your car, to have for your family. So we add that. So we're adding all of this thing in, in into this package, and you'll be able to um, you'll be able to do a uh, monthly subscription. So all you would have to do is you, you pay for the first month and the second month, and then every month um, you have a recurring billing, and we just send you all the supplements. There's actually something else that I'm going to be trying. It's a new product. I try it first. There wouldn't be an added cost. I would just add it into your monthly uh, immune boosting auto ship kit. And uh, if you want, you can go to um, Atlantis. So um, you, you just go to Ask, A-S-K. I'll write it down so you guys know. Ask Dr. Martone, and you can get it there. It's A-S-K-D-O-C-T-O-R-M-A-R-T-O-N-E.com. You can, you can go check it out there. You can order it there. It's 141 for the first month, and then it's 71 90 each additional month and we just uh, do the first two months up front just because we're going to be ordering these products these products sell out so i want to get on the ball anybody that wants them just go there order them and um, we'll be placing our order everything will ship in the last well not everything because we're going to ship it monthly to you uh, but but you, the shipments will go in, in the, uh, about the second to last week in september and uh, we got to get them in we got to do the kits and then we'll ship them out. You'll get them by October 1st because we're going to be starting them October 1st. I'm also going to be doing another immune system class so you know um, how to use them. And then also, if you do get sick, what to do, how to boost your immune system when you get sick because there are other, there are hacks. There are different ways, there are different things to do when you're sleeping. There are different things that you can do. We talked about a little bit, elevate your core temperature. You can exercise, but then you have to sleep and how you eat is important when you're sick. But today, what I wanted to go over, and I hope that you loved it, and I hope that you got the information from it, is I wanted to show you how, the, the, what, how and why your immune system gets sick in the winter time versus the summertime is because you're loading a hybrid car that we're already only, we're already running you know, full energy, and we're only allowed, allowing 50% recharge because of stress that we're under and the different things. 
and, and why the winter time pushes us over the edge. So if you, if you like this information, share it, go on, on Facebook. If we're hooked up as Facebook friends, push it out to people. If you want to take advantage of coming into the office, if you're not a patient, you can do that on ask, D-O-C-T-O-R, martoni.com. If you want to order your kits for the winter time, you can order them now, but they will ship out uh, October 1st. Now it's time for questions. If anybody has any questions, I'm going to kind of go on here on the chat and um, um, finish watching you right now. Great. Yes, I am going to, this is recorded. Um, this is recorded to the cloud. I will be pushing this out for people. Um, do I recommend a specific vitamin or straight up vitamin D? The brand that we use here is the orthomolecular brand for the vitamin D. Um, that if you go on AskDrMartone.com. You'll be able to see it there. Uh, Todd, you can order it, and uh, we can uh, send you a whole bunch of stuff for your clients down there, um, and, and, and we can talk privately on that. If anybody else has any questions, let me see here. Which fall winter kits be available for kids or teens? The fall and winter kits um, will be available for kids or teens. What my suggestion is, actually, that is a fantastic question. Um, it will... Um, so it all depends on the child. If you want it for a child or, or teen, I, what I would do is one kit to split between two kids. Um, that would be a uh, that would be good. But I would need to know the weights of the kids and things like that. So teenagers, let's say a, 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 a teenager that um, weight wise would be um, let's say a uh, hundred and one hundred and twenty pounds and above, one hundred and thirty pounds. Um, you know, uh, oh geez, I, each individual supplement is different. Kristen, let's talk privately. Um, I will put I will put something together for kids and teens. This right here would be more of an 18 and over. Um, if we want to do it for children, we can do it, but we would have to split it up. You wouldn't take as much of the supplements, and I wouldn't add as much of the supplements. That is actually a great question. Thank you for uh, thank you for bringing that up. Um, Let's see. I was really intrigued. Basically, he is amazing. So true. What, uh, what your kids? Thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Carolina. Um, oh, Carolina. Hello. How are you? Um, it was very nice. I really appreciate that. If anybody has a question and they uh, want to ask it live, what you can do is you can raise your hand. I can unmute the line. If you have anything you want to share with the group, if you have anything that works for you that you think works for anybody else, I mean, obviously there are some things that I, I kind of, you know, if you exercise that boosts your immune system, that is good. I really wanted to stick to like, what is it about the winter time? Because remember, think about it. If you exercise, you're asking more out of the body. You're asking for more performance out of the body. So you actually need more recharge time. Can you exercise in the winter time and not get sick? Absolutely. I do it. But you need to also be conscious of all of these other things, more conscious of all these other things. And if you're a five in the morning waker upper to exercise, really be careful about that because you can't sacrifice sleep, especially not in the wintertime. All right. If anybody has any questions, anybody has any comments, I got another. My thought on cooking for seasonal, any thoughts on cooking seasonally? and influence on immune system functions and changes the seasons, AKA, I love it. Grandma soup, pies, heavy foods, fall or winter salads, spring, summer, et cetera. Yes, so I'm very opinionated. I have a lot of opinions, I'm a nutritionist. So um, when, I, when I think about food, I'm a macrobiotic eater. What that means is I like to eat based on what my ancestors ate in my area. So as you are you thinking about these things, if I had to kind of, if I had to circle some of my, my tops, right? I would say body core temperature right here, right? Um, getting adjusted, the immune system, the, the di digestive system in the sun, right? And well, oh, hydration. But body core temperature is a big one. It's huge for me. So if you can eat more warm soups, pies, the pie, the sugar actually interferes with the immune system function. I didn't go over that. I will in our next class. Um, 
but heavier foods, foods that are heavier, what that does is a heavier food takes more energy to digest and it actually creates heat. So foods that are a little heavier create more heat. They internally heat you from the inside. Um, Matt the cat. Matt the cat, that is a great question. Uh, yes, I, I, do, um, I do love it. I, I love um, eating, uh, eating seasonally. It's super important. That's why I like to ship to my, I, I eat a lot of nuts in the winter time, a lot of pecans, almonds. You gotta be careful with peanuts, but uh, I love peanuts, but you just have to be careful with them. So the, the, these, are, these are great questions. And this is what it's all about. It's about listening to the information and getting your, thanks, getting, uh, getting your um, questions answered. And because the questions that you answer, somebody else has the same question. And it, and it, 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 it like, it gets me all jonesed up when we have all these questions and we're going over all of these things. So if anybody, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of go, go with my proverbial hand for, my, I'm going to wave my hand for questions, you know, going once you can ask a question two ways. You can, you can um, either raise your hand and I can allow you to talk or we can, uh, we can uh, ask it on the thread right here. Thank you, it's a great class. Question from many vegetarians. Oh yes, there are certain winter vitamins needed above and beyond. Are there certain winter vitamins also raw veggies? So the vitamins themselves are, um, are, are taken up with especially the Mitochore. Mitochore is a phenomenal supplement. I always like to change supplements. My favorite time to take a supplement is when I'm taking Mitochore. Um, but You'll get, your, you'll get your supplementation there. Let's talk about protein for a vegetarian. Protein sources, great protein sources, which it would be like eating a steak for you, which are full protein sources. Soy is one of them. Arguably, there's some problems with that. Um, hemp seed is another one. Goji berries is another one. Spirulina is another one. So these, these are all full sources of protein. Super important. And one of the best ways, actually, I, I probably don't have it in the book right now. I don't know the page. But one of the best ways and one of the foods that harnesses the most amount of sun energy is spirulina. And, uh, and, and, and uh, spirulina and chlorella, those are ones of blue-green algae, ones of phytoplankton. I think it's spirulina is the one that is the uh, full source of protein. Actually, I believe it is. I think it's the most dense, nutritious food on the planet. It's one of them anyways. But um, spirulina would be, would be a good one. So, so those, are some, those are some really good suggestions for you, especially if you are a vegetarian. All right. I, um, the, to, to, I do not see any more questions coming in. I'm going to raise the proverbial hand, go in once, go in twice. That's it, three times a lady. Thank you so much. Go and ask drmartone.com and uh, I will be putting more follow-up stuff to this. You are now on my Ask Dr. Martone COVID list. So what that means is you'll get, um, whenever I do anything on the immune system, or I do anything talking about that stuff, you will be, you'll get information on that. Um, and, um, oh, I got one more. I think I got one more message coming down here. No, I don't see it. All right, sorry, nope. Um, I'm sorry if you put it, if you, if you asked me a question and I didn't answer your question, I'm so sorry about that, but that happens. So I'm going to stop the recording now. I'm going